temporary health issue that I have chosen to make my presentation about is drug addiction. I feel like drug addiction is relevant enough in our society that we all either know someone or know someone who knows someone or have actually experienced it ourselves. So first I'm going to go over my own personal experiences with drug addiction and then my thesis, three main issues, some important changes and controversies, applications to the field of public health, and my closing points. So my own story. My dad was actually addicted to nicotine and he was smoking cigarettes every day when I was about five or six years old. Him being a nurse, he knew that he was not supposed to be smoking all these cigarettes all around me because he knew all the dangers of secondhand smoke. And so what he did was he took the necessary steps that he needed to take in order to help kick that addiction to the curb. And he went through a 30-day program and came out clean. And because of his genetics, I actually have my, had my own drug addiction myself. I was addicted to marijuana for a little bit. I found myself smoking every day for about a three-month period. Um, I felt like I could not enjoy my day without smoking. I felt like I was very on edge and that I needed it to calm down. And it got to the point where I told myself, you know what, I need to stop being so reliant on this. I need to, I just need to stop. And so for, I decided for a whole week, I would not smoke any, I would not smoke anything. I gave all my smoking utensils to my significant other and I told her to hold on to it. Don't give this to me until a week from now. The first few days went pretty bad. I found myself having urges and impulses, feeling the need to smoke. I was very irritated. I felt like I couldn't calm down. I was just, I have just, just feeling angry. And I even called up one of my friends asking him to let me smoke with him. And I think God was actually looking down on me that day because my friend told me, no, I'm not available today. So maybe later this weekend we can smoke. And then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to stick with this. I'm going to get through this week. After this week, I'll reward myself. And I feel like having that experience showed me that I don't need drugs to be happy. I don't need them to calm down. I just have them only for special occasions. And my thesis. So luckily for me, I was able to get the help that I needed. That's not the case for... 10% of 21 million Americans. You know, people don't get the help that they need because they feel like they don't have that. They don't have a problem. They feel other people have a problem. However, I want them to know that there is a problem with drug addiction. And, you know, sometimes we all just need an extra push. We all just need a support system that will help us kick these addictions to the curb. And addiction kills thousands per year. Addiction with alcohol, opioids, cocaine, or any other substance kills thousands of Americans each year. There were over 70,000 drug overdose deaths in 2017, mostly from opioids, which represents a double of drug-related deaths in under 10 years. Aside from addiction involving opioids, aside from addiction involving nicotine, alcohol, or other drugs, an estimated additional 80 million people are risky substance abusers, meaning not addicted but use tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs that threaten public health and safety. An example is when people go out for drinks and someone gets caught with a DUI of potentially hurting others in the process. Factors that lead to addiction. Genetics. Genetics, including the, the impact of one's environment on gene expression, account for about 40 to 60 percent of a person's risk of addiction. Parents that were addicted to drugs can manipulate their child's genes, as I am a perfect example of that. My dad was addicted to nicotine. I ended up getting addicted to marijuana. Environmental factors can increase a person's risk. A chaotic home environment with physical, emotional, or mental abuse in the household can create drug addictions. You know, drugs sometimes cause an escape for people. You know, they use it as an excuse to get out of the house and be out for a while and just enjoy what enjoy their life away from home. And teenagers and mental health disorders. 
Teenagers and people with mental health disorders are more at risk for drug use and addiction than other populations. This can be from peer pressure, trying to fit in, or all the stress of school and others around them. Drug users may not want to seek help. Roughly 19.4 million people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol don't believe that they need help for it. Why? Sometimes they feel shame. Sometimes they are just scared that they will be judged. A big problem with drug addiction is that not everyone seeks help. Thankfully for me, I did not need to seek help because I tried to fix addiction on my own, though if my direction did not work, I may or may not have seeked help, and an article dives deeper into why people do not believe they need the help for it. According to a rehabilitation program called Narcanon, they concluded that 96% of people do not believe that they need treatment, 3% of people felt that they needed treatment but did not try to find it, and 1% of people felt that they needed treatment and made the effort. The reasons as to why people did not seek treatment but they knew they needed it are those that were not ready to stop, could not afford it, possible negative effect on a job, concern about negative opinions of others, not knowing where to go for treatment, or no program having a type of treatment needed. One reason why someone does not seek help for addiction is shame. Shame can be overwhelming, which creates a barrier to seek treatment. The person may feel that they are not worthy of attention or help. Another reason why people don't want to seek attention is fear. They're scared of what, what others will think about them. They're scared that they're going to have a negative image in the eyes of others. One thing that drug abusers need to understand is that recovery is not a one-time thing. It is something to commit to for the rest of your life on a day-to-day -day basis. It is a change of life that people need to commit to and it is hard to do. If a person has entered rehab and has relapsed, they might be afraid to let others down. It is a battle that many addicts have suffered multiple times. Drug users are in denial. One of the biggest obstacles to recovery is the denial of it being a problem. Sharam Hashmat, PhD, believes that addicts are notoriously prone to denial. Addiction can cost a person's job, health, or their family, and if they remain ignorant to the negative consequences, they cannot guide their decision making. There have been plenty of people that have become homeless because of because their family cannot tolerate a drug addict. There are also people that lose their homes because they would rather spend the money on drugs and forget to pay the bills on time. Why are many in denial? Admitting to negative consequences requires one to end the behavior. Quitting will bring pain, so denial protects a person against the negative experience. Addicts lack knowledge about negative consequences, not out of denial, but because of impairment in insight and self-awareness. Denial also alleviates anxiety. When a person is in denial of the situation, there is nothing to worry about. All anxiety and fear is out the door because they are not thinking about negative connotations of the situation. Acknowledge Acquiring knowledge of negative consequences of drug use needs to be seen as an important step to recovery. Important Changes and Controversies There are important controversies that make this a difficult issue to have a conversation about to make forward changes. Potential Impact on Health and Wellness A potential impact on health and wellness is that there are many people that believe that drug addiction is not seen as a disease because it started as a choice. One major change is the legalization of marijuana. It is not studied as much because it was illegal. Now that it is being legalized in many states across America, it is being studied more, but also starting to get used recreationally more now than before. So more people are smoking marijuana, but the good thing is we are able to conduct more studies on it. This also changes the wellness aspect of the public, creating differences on policies for arrests. Relevant Risk Factors and Prevention Techniques Increasing taxes on tobacco sales can improve population health. This makes less people buy tobacco products because it becomes more expensive. Access to health services can impact health. According to Haggerty and Shapiro in 2014, a model of social practice for public health, barriers to accessing health services include lack of availability, high costs, lack of insurance coverage, or limited language access. Applications to public health. Currently, strategies being utilized are prevention programs, potential alternatives to consider in the workforce, media, and no cold turkey method. Strategies currently utilized. Prevention programs. Research-based prevention programs are used especially in youth. Teach children early the effects of drugs. 
the brain is still developing and using drugs will disrupt brain function for motivation, memory, learning, judgment, and behavior control. Commercials on TV of drug abuse. Not people. Not many people even watch commercials anymore. People record on their DVR and fast forward all the commercials. Nicotine patch or other drugs help people get off drugs. It's just as dangerous to use these. Potential alternatives to consider. Since the risk of drug abuse increases during times of transition, we should not only have prevention programs for youth, but installed in our workforce. An, am an example would be an adult who just had a divorce or lost a job. They may start using drugs. Having prevention programs required in the workforce reminds adults the risks of drug abuse. It creates support systems within employees as well. A lot of our influence comes from the media. We need more awareness throughout the media rather than commercials. It can be an ad or something more relatable. Closing points. Recommendations and things to consider. Preventive care is a direction that we can go towards. More resources in local communities rather than just the national hotline. Cognitive enhancers. Long-term drug use is associated with a wide range of cognitive impairments. Cognitive impairments are potential targets for the treatment of addictive disorders. These impairments can be targeted by both medications and beho behavioral approaches. Cognitive enhancement to, to improve treatment outcomes is a novel strategy. It's more affordable care for those that are seeking help. Things to think about. Ways to prevent drug abuse, ways to bring awareness of how drug abuse starts, trying to understand the signs and symptoms. Recap. So I went over my personal experience, three main issues, some important changes and controversies, some applications and relationships to the field of public health, recommendations, and things to think about. Like I said, drug addiction is something that we all know of someone who has been addicted to drugs and it is a problem that is still sweeping this nation granted the numbers are starting to go down but we still have a lot of people who are not getting the help that they need